Hello and welcome! I'm DDF Racer, and today I'm going to be doing only my second ever oval race in iRacing. Now because of a little quirk in the way that some iRacing series are scheduled, there are weeks where you can race road cars on ovals and oval cars on road circuits. And this week is exactly one of those. I'll be driving the USF 2000 at New Hampshire, which is much bigger than my first attempt at an oval race at Southern National Motorsports Park a few months back. That place was tiny, only four tenths of a mile long, with lap times of only 13 seconds. Yes, one three seconds. Here, however, we're talking just over a mile, so much longer lap times, and also much longer straights with much higher top speeds too, which means slipstreaming should come into play a little bit more here. But there's significantly less banking, so I'm not going to be able to lean on the track as much throughout the corners, so technically while this is just going to be another 15 minutes of turning left, it should be a completely different kind of 15 minutes of turning left, if that makes sense. Also, I could potentially progress from my Oval Rookie license today, even though I've never actually driven a single race in the Oval Rookie series. iRacing can be a little bit weird like that sometimes. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy. That's the end of the session, P4. Qualifying is over 10 cars in today's race, and I am starting in fourth rolling start here at New Hampshire, uh, as is typical with the USF 2000s and ovals, of course. So I am still in rookies, so I am car number two. I don't know if that's indicative of my actual pace or I rating or what, but yeah, 15 minutes at New Hampshire. Let's go. Follow car number one in the outside lane. Okay, here we go. Rolling start, guys. Position four on the outside. I'm probably going to get shuffled back a bit. Let's wait for that safety car to pull into the pits and get the green flag. Start it in second because I think first gear is a little bit too high revs. Now that everyone's backing down. Okay, down. Get ready. Go. 15 minutes left. That's 15. Don't squeeze me, bro! Right, what's that? Still there. Two inside, three wide. Car low. Woo! Still there. Back out of it, back out of it. Hold your line. Still there. Clear inside. Give him the space, give him all the space in the world. Three wide to turn one, that was sketchy as. No, nah, not yet, not yet. It's a long race. No cautions here today either, guys. Oh, wrecking, wrecking. He's in the fence. Sorry, buddy. I was clearly on the inside of you. Back out of it. We don't want to get separated from the pack ahead, though. Right, okay. Eyes forward. Let's... Let's get on with this now, the race has settled down, we survived the first few laps here, <laughs> very sketchy. 13.00, V6, your last lap time was at 13.58. Use momentum, slingshot of the inside, get the run on this guy, pull to the outside again. We're in sixth, we dropped a couple of spots. The focus here is zero incidents. Clear low. Let's get the over under. Outside. Give him the space, net code of course. Still there. The fastest lap for Griffin. Clear the time. That was at 13.10. Far outside. That's your fastest lap. Clear high. Whoa! Whoa, what happened then? It just wheel spun. That didn't happen at any point during practice. Wowza! Hold your line. Clear outside. Well, that got me a little bit by surprise. We're now back down into seventh. Okay. Maybe flooring it on the inside of the banking isn't such a good idea. Car went light on me then. Keep that in mind, guys. <laughs> P7. You've just done a 13.82. The thing about ovals is you pick them off one by one, you gotta time your move to perfection. As long as you keep in reach of the guy ahead, you've got that slipstream. You're okay. Alternatively called a draft, as the guy in fifth has gone wide up ahead of us, Mr. David. Nice gap behind, we are safe. Fastest lap for Ott, 29.61. The lap time was at 30.00. That's your quickest lap in this session. 
Thank you, Spotter. Lap times of only 30 seconds, so 50 minute race, respecting about 30, 31 laps today, I'd say. Griffin is now in the lead. Marlow. Still there. So we can pin him around the outside here. It's still a bit shaky. Skatey, sorry. Back out of it here, it's a bit too close. That lap was at 30, point zero four inside. Try and get the outside run again, he's still there. That's it, we've got the run on the outside. Highline seems to be doing okay today. Clear inside, the guy behind's catching. The gap's now 0 two seven. There we go. That's one position up. If you take the inside line, it seems like you scrub off too much speed. P6, that lap time was 30.00. So I don't want to take the inside line when I'm overtaking someone because I can't run it wide on the outside, but the over-under, almost like the slingshot, seems to work well. Looks like there's three wide up at the head of the pack as well now. There's a bit more grip on the high line on turning, and you just have to hold the throttle ever so slightly and get the exit out. We're pulled away from the guy behind now. We're using David to pull us up. Second place is now down shuffled again. James is now leading. Yep, there's a battle up ahead. I wouldn't be surprised to see some shenanigans if I was you. Oh, shenanigans! No cautions, like I said. No, what the hell? There's a freebie. Far high. And now here's maybe another one. I help out July. Okay, that lap time's are pretty consistent. P5, that lap was out. We're outside. Is he still there? He's still there. Okay, let's tuck back in again. That's just what the inside line does. Inside. It just scrubs off too much speed. You just can't get the move done. Hold your line. Ten minutes to go. That's ten minutes left. Clear inside. Whereas this way, the outside, you just seem to be able to carry so much more momentum, so the inside is not the way to go. Just You just scrub too much. 29.59. You've just done at 30.37. Okay, so let's try and goose people. Let's trick them into going to the inside, into defending. Now he's holding his line, so I'm just going to back out of it. Oh, he's leading the race. That inside's not going to work on this guy. We got the run, though. Oh! Can't do that, David. Don't move. Don't cut me off, man. But now we're cooking. I'm going to have to try it. I've got the run. Still there. Hold your line. Still there. Will this respond? Clear high. Yep. There we go. Outside. Nope, he's still there. Still up here. Still there. He fought. That lap time was 13. Come on, dude. Clear high. What the fuck, man? The horrible racing. Are you okay, mate? Daniel, whatever, Finny? I'm sorry, David. Huh? Take your ass. Take it home, dude. Stewart's I don't even hear it. That's the horrible. That was horrible. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. Dude, I get it. Sorry for blowing up. Have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. Sorry. And that's that, guys. USF 2000s at New Hampshire. Oh, I didn't think I did anything wrong. I mean, I turned in. Um, he's got the outside line. He just turned into me, I guess. No, I don't get it. This track's simple, this car is easy, it's easy to catch if you lose it, which I don't even know how you lose it, there's a fucking reference line, and there's like four lanes on all four turns, I am super sorry for blowing up, but damn, top five finish there, all I'm trying to do is improve I ratings so like everyone else, but fuck, <sighs> yeah, I was being generous too, I mean, I wasn't being super aggressive by any means, all clear on pit exit. Okay, well it turns out that I actually got repaired. I actually towed back to the pits and got repaired, so we're back in the race. So I'm going to go and finish it, guys. I'm going to go and finish this race. So at this point of the race, you can probably imagine 
am feeling pretty dejected right now, pretty embarrassed, pretty awkward about the whole thing. You know, things have been said on the radio. Uh, I'm not exactly proud of the way things have gone in the race. I'm ready to sign off, basically. I'm ready to quit the recording and probably not even upload it to YouTube. But my car repairs itself incredibly quickly in the pits. I thought I was toast, but two minutes later, I'm back out again, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Four laps down. Let's, let's finish the race and see it out, I guess. And I don't normally cut things out of the races here in my iRacing videos in this channel. You know me. You've seen this before. I show the whole thing from green lights to checkered flag. But I'm going to cut that out today because I want to skip forward to the end of the race and what happened after the race. Because despite everything that you've just heard and seen and everything that's been said, it's not that simple. It's not that clear cut about the iRacing community. You know, I thought we've got another situation where we've got some toxicity, some complaining, you know, the outbursts over the comms, the abuse, all that kind of thing, which I kind of come to expect with iRacing, really. I've heard it from so many other people, but just watch what happens next. Okay, we're done. Sorry again for the contact, David. Oh, we're all good, dude. I promise. No worries at all. I'm sorry for the way I read. Good race, everyone. Good race. Have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. Um, I want to learn from this. I want to not do that again, obviously. What exactly did I do wrong uh, from your perspective? Did I just not turn in enough? What caused that? I'm still learning, so, you know, any anything I can do to get better is appreciated, man. Let me know. Yeah, uh, I'll have to check the replay to give me a second, but uh, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth again. Cool, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll load that up as well. Yeah, man. Still here, Fanny? Uh, yep, still here, mate. If you go back to lap 13, man, and go look at lap 10 and 11 and 12, uh, you'll see you're faster than I was, and my only strategy and my only thing that I had against you was to hold a line. That's my only defense against you. So you had to take the inside or outside and kind of then nudge me out of the way. But what you did is going into one there, I had to run on the outside on you, and then you pulled slightly back ahead of me, and then you jerked it to the right. Like, that was the only thing you did, is you just kind of jerked it, I think, to kind of widen your arc a little bit at the last second, which is perfectly fine in any other circumstance, but I was right there. Uh, other than that, I mean, the last two, three races, or laps before that were really good laps. You were faster than I was. Uh, and like I said, my only thing I could do was try to hold you off with being steady with my lap. Other than that, I have zero complaints, dude. I hope that you were driving your nose in my ass and not... Okay, that sounded weird. <laughs> Good couple of laps. Yeah, I'm just looking at the replay now. Yeah, I just um, turned in a little bit later than normal. You were already turning in. And yeah, I, I should have I should have kept that tighter for sure. Nah, no, nah, I completely completely see that, mate. Now nah, I, I appreciate you going back and and having a look at the replay and let me know as well, man. Yeah, it's only my second ever oval race, so I got to learn these things. I'm just sorry that I have to learn them with you in the fence. That's not not the way I wanted to do it, man. Like in ovals and stuff, whenever like I've had issues, it's always because. Uh... I didn't realize that they were on the outside or uh, they didn't realize I was on the outside and basically they go in to the turn like normal um, but you can't go into the turn like normal if someone's like basically breathing down your neck the spotter's gonna be too late. Yeah, at that point you gotta use your mirrors and kind of your sixth sense there. But that's any for real, like uh, those last couple of laps before that were I mean, they were spot on laps, like you were aggressive and charged me, like I said, the only thing I do is try to hold my line and, and hold you off, like you were maybe a tenth or so faster than I was. Yeah, I realized that the inside was not going to work really because um, no, it, it, I was scrubbing off too much speed, so I thought i got to get you on the outside, and I did get a little run on the outside the lap before, but obviously you closed the door on that, which is cool. You're not, you're not going to give me that outside line in any, any, any circumstance, so I, I screwed up, man. Didn't turn in enough. Also, once you actually know that you're clear, like pull up to that outside lane, so then you know that you have the outside uh, line. Uh, if they want to make a move back on you, you'll see them in your mirror dart back towards the inside, and then you'll know that, hey, I need to play on the outside a little bit more, especially if you've already liked the outside. Uh, it was just like, hey, I now that I've got the position, move it to the outside, and then he has to move to the non-preferred line or the line that you don't want to take anyway. But then you just have to make sure that you don't come down on him. Yeah, what he's saying is it's literally every action is a reaction. Um, especially when you're on side by side like that, like a lot of, a lot of passes take two, three laps to really set it, especially when you're only a tenth, not even a tenth, a thousandth of a second off or so. So look at lap eight uh, on me, and then uh, you'll see me try to make a pass on the guy that rage quit. The the black and white car is going to be the guy that I get into. So I'm able to like kind of pull up with them, and then I can't, I'm not going to make a three wide. 
so I come down to turn three and I basically get alongside him and then I give him room uh, and then he just doesn't really try to hold his line, he tries to push it like a hot lap. Yeah, I just saw that your front left on his rear right then just got got tangled up and off he went, yeah. <laughs> but I gave him plenty of room, he definitely drifted up into me, in which case then I don't have any pro- like, that's not my problem, uh, considering how he squeezed me, if you look like two laps prior to that, he like pushed me down to the inside of the track uh, a couple times before getting into the turn to try to slow me down so I can't take my preferred line to pass him, like, I, I, I can't, I, I even go on the outside to try to make it work and he just didn't want to make it work. I, I appreciate that guys, I appreciate you taking the time out to uh, teach teach me basically and just run through things, no, I really appreciate that guys. Yeah, thanks for the lessons guys, I'll catch you around, all the best thing. Eh? And that's pretty much that, what turned out to be an incredibly embarrassing and frustrating race actually turned out to be a good lesson in oval driving. Um, big shout outs to William and David for actually taking the time to hang out and just help me, basically. Um, it's very, very nice to see not just the explosion side in the iRacing community, but also the helpful side that goes along with it. And I know that David was very frustrated in the moment, and to be honest, I would be too if someone did that to me. But now that I've had a look at the replay, and now that I've had it all pointed out to me to see what happened, how that situation unfolded, and where I went wrong, it, it's quite obvious, really, where I need to improve. My situational awareness is not... So this bit, this bit spooked me a bit, because I thought I had a run on the outside, but he, um, he chopped my nose off. Very rightly so, because I'm not alongside him. He doesn't have to let me have the run, but that kind of spooked me a bit. And then it was at this point of the circuit, now I've got the good run on him. I go to the inside here. And I've got the run here. He can carry so much more speed around the outside, and this is what I should have done. This is what... Th if I'd have taken that inside line much lower down, then it would have been fine. And I, I thought it was coming alongside me there, so I kind of moved across, and yeah, yeah, that's obvious. That's that's obvious. I really just kind of Nico Rosberg that and went in a straight line, and that is one heavily damaged USF 2000s. Oh, anyway, guys. Let's go and check the results and see how that affects me. Okay, so there are the results, and somehow, through all of that, I've actually gained 0.54 safety rating. Uh, no idea how I only got two instant points out of all that, and David actually got four. That doesn't seem fair, considering uh, I made car contact, put it in the fence, completely wrote off the front of the car, spent ages in the pits, and then came back out four laps down. But that is the rating that I got, so I'm not proud of it, but I, I guess I'll, I'll take that gain. But more than the rating gain, guys, what I want to take away from this race is that people are inherently nice, and even when they blow up you on the radio, they're still just nice people into there. They're still just human beings who just want to go racing and have a good time. And obviously, there are frustrations. And I was, yeah, like I said earlier, I was ready to sign off. I was ready to just quit the recording and throw this, throw this recording in the bin as well as the race. I wasn't really originally going to upload this to YouTube, but even though the result itself wasn't great, just my faith in humanity, for want of a better word, has, has kind of been restored a little bit with that one. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, whether it was the action before the crash, or whether it was the reaction after the crash. Either way, don't forget to leave the video a like, and share your thoughts in the comments guys, what do you think about this whole thing? Any advice that you guys have got for me as well would be massively appreciated, because I do want to get into oval racing, but as you can tell, I'm very green at this, so... I need to get better. And if you want to catch those races, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and press that notification bell. But until then, you look after yourselves, and I'll see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.